Yes. Um, giving hormones before, during and after radiotherapy to the prostate has been shown to improve uh, cancer out outcomes. So almost everybody who's having external beam radiotherapy to their prostate will have a hormones um, before, during and after their radiation. Um, well, it was proven in a large European study comparing men who were having radiotherapy alone to men who were having hormone treatment before, during and after their radiotherapy. And since then, that has been adopted as a standard of care. Well, that depends on the particular situation. So with curable prostate cancer, we normally divide um divide them into low risk, intermediate and high risk patients, according to three features, um, namely the initial PSA blood test value, uh, the stage of the prostate cancer in terms of the T stage and the grade on their biopsy. So um, those three pieces of information allow us to assign the patient to the low intermediate or high risk category. So, um, for instance, patients who are in the high risk category, typically I would offer them two to three years of hormone treatment in total, whereas the, most of the patients in the intermediate uh, category would have six months of hormone treatment. Uh, the majority of the patients in the low risk category, um, we often don't treat initially and, and uh, watch them sometimes for years on what's called active surveillance. Well, um, we can treat most patients with localized prostate cancer with hormones and radiotherapy. Um, I suppose the other way to look at the question is, who do we try to avoid using hormones and radiotherapy if possible? That would be younger patients, um, the patients sort of 60, 65 or less, um, who have very curable disease. Um, uh, there's a very small theoretical risk of what we call secondary malignancy when using external beam radiotherapy. Um, so obviously the prostate will get the very high dose, but in order to get that radiation dose to the prostate, the X-ray beams will travel through the rest of the organs in the patient's pelvis to get to the prostate and go out of their body. Um, and the low, the areas of the pelvis which we receive the, the low or the medium radiation dose can be can be thought of as as being at a tiny risk in the decades after the treatment um, of developing uh, newer cancers, um, and there's no association of that risk with brachytherapy or or prostate surgery. So for patients who don't have high risk disease, it's not. It's generally felt it's not worth taking running that very small additional risk that isn't associated with the other two treatment modalities. So the hormone treatment has its own side effects or endocrine effects. Um, effectively, hormone treatment switches off uh, the patient's uh, production of testosterone from their, their testicles. Uh, which tends to drive prostate cancer. Um, the side effects include hot flushes and sweats, um, feeling tired, uh, putting weight on their tummy particularly. Uh, it can push up the blood sugar levels and um, in the long term can affect um, blood pressure. And uh, a lot of people feel that uh, prolonged hormone therapy is associated with increased risk of cardiovascular problems. Um, the side effects of the radiotherapy can divide it into the ones that happen during the course of radiation and for a few weeks afterwards these acute side effects um, uh, affect the waterworks the urethra which carries the urine runs right through the middle of the prostate um, and so it's difficult to spare that with external beam radiotherapy so that could produce burning sensation on peeing uh, a bit like uh, the sensation when you have a urinary tract infection um, peeing more frequently, more urgently, getting up at night to pee, um, having a slower stream of urine if the prostate swells as a result of um, the, the radiation treatment. And in a very few patients, um, 
fewer than 5% of patients during the course of their external beam radiotherapy, their prostate may swell to the extent that it interferes with their ability to enter their bladder. That is a rare occurrence, but if it happens, we would not want to interrupt the radiotherapy and we put a catheter in for the rest of the treatment in that um, instance. Um, of course, the uh, bladder is, sits on top of the prostate and that can be affected uh, by the radiation um, that's mainly concentrated in the prostate below, below and that can give some irritative urinary symptoms. And the, the rectum sits behind the prostate um, and as all of the prostate um, cancer patients will know, um, when the urologist initially examined them, they could feel the back of their prostate gland through the front of the wall of the rectum on a digital rectal examination. The bowel being affected by the radiation in the, in the short term during the radiotherapy can lead to uh, uh, flatulence, um, looser stools, more frequent opening of the bowels, a sensation that they need to open the bowels, but there's nothing there, which we call tenesmus. Um, and for some patients who are quite sensitive to radiation, they may pass mucus um, or even uh, that sees some traces of blood um, when they're opening their bowels. Um, there's also um, a degree of fatigue, which perhaps is related to the hormone treatment and perhaps um, an, eff uh, an effect of the radiation um, that our patients um, have to put with. Um, there are later side effects which um, may be permanent uh, in a small number of patients that can affect the waterworks, the bowels, the erectile function. Um, uh, and also there's the small risk of what we called, um, um, well, it, there's a small risk um, of um, thinning of the bones of the pelvis being compounded by the radiation that has gone through during the treatment. Um, causing um, fractures in the future in a very small number of patients. Um, uh, but it's important that patients are fully informed about even the uh, rare but serious side effects so that they can come to an informed decision when they decide to, to proceed with hormone therapy and radiotherapy for their prostate cancer.